Hi, welcome to the magic of math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my video lesson is on the number of solutions when solving a linear system. Our objectives today are that you will analyze a system of linear equations to determine the number of solutions. The essential question I'd like you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson. How can you determine the type of solution of a system of linear equations graphically? And how can you do so algebraically? Here are different types of solutions. A system of linear equations can have one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. So graphically, this is what it would look like if we had one solution. Our lines would intersect, and we have learned that when you graph, the point of intersection is your solution. So they can only intersect in one point when they're crossing like this. They cannot come back. They're straight lines, so they're not going to come back and intersect again. So when lines intersect, we have one solution. The second type of solution you can have is no solution. You could have a system of linear equations that when you graph it, that the lines are parallel, meaning that all points are equidistant from each other, and they will never intersect, making no solution as your type of solution. And the third kind is an infinitely many solutions. It's when the lines are the same. So when you graph both equations that are given to you, they are what we call coinciding lines. One is right on top of the other. They are indeed the same line and probably given to you in a system written in two different ways. But they are indeed the same line and every point on the line is a true solution to both. So there are infinitely many solutions since a line is made up of an infinite number of points. So just to review, we can have one solution when the lines intersect. If the lines are parallel, we will have no solution. And if the lines are the same, we're going to have infinitely many solutions. So now it's your turn. I'm gonna ask you to graph the system of linear equations to determine if there is one solution no solution, or infinitely many solutions. Please pause now and come back when you're done and ready to check your work. Welcome back. So here's our solution. So I am going to put this little pink dot next to this first equation and graph that line in pink. I often ask my students to get colored pencils and graph them in two different colors. So we're going to start off by identifying that the y-intercept, this is written in slope-intercept form, so m, x, plus b. b is my y-intercept, so I'm going to plot the y-intercept of 3, where it crosses the y-axis. And then we have a slope of 2. So I'm going to rise 2, run 1, and plot my second point. Now I can draw my line. So that's my first equation. Second equation, I'm going to put the green dot here and graph it in green. So identifying our slope of 2, mx, plus b. So now my b, my y-intercept, is negative 1. We're going to plot our y-intercept on the y-axis at negative 1. And then my slope is 2. So I'm going to rise 2 and run 1 and plot my second point and graph my line. So I can see from this that these are parallel lines, meaning they will never intersect, and I have no solution. Here's another one for you. Please graph the system and determine the type of solution. Go ahead and pause. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. Here's our solution. So once again, I'm going to mark this one as pink and graph it. So my y-intercept is negative 6. So I go to negative 6 on my y-axis. And then my slope is 2. So I'm going to rise 2 and run 1, plot my point, graph my line. My second equation, I'm going to mark with green. My y-intercept is negative 3. Negative 3 on the y-axis and plot my point. My slope here is 1. So I'm going to rise 1, run 1, and plot my point, and draw my line. So I can see that I have a point of intersection here. It's at 3, 0. So the type of solution here, because my lines intersect, is one solution. Now there's another way we can determine types of solutions, and it's when we're solving algebraically, either using substitution or elimination. 
When you solve a system of linear equations algebraically, there are three possible solutions. We've already reviewed that one is one solution. That's when both variables are equal to a value. So you solve and you get x equals a number, y equals a number, and you write it as an ordered pair. So one solution, we're going to get solve for x, solve for y, and we're going to answer as an ordered pair, our point of intersection. The second type of solution when you're solving algebraically can be no solution and that is when both variable terms are eliminated and the numerical statement is false. So this is what it would look like for no solution. You would solve, the x and y would go away, and you would end up with something not exactly like this but similar to this. 7 doesn't equal 4. So you would end up with your own numerical statement that would be different numbers, but it would be false it would not be a true statement, and that means you have no solution and that there are no values for x and y that will make the system true. And when you graph it, that's when they're parallel. But this is what happens when you do it algebraically by substitution or elimination. The third kind is infinitely many solutions. When you're solving algebraically, again, both variable terms are eliminated, but now our numerical statement we're left with is true. So for infinitely many solutions, you would end up with something similar to this. A number equals that same number, and it's true, meaning any number is true for the system. So any ordered pair that you plug in will be true for both equations. All right, let's go ahead and practice this. It's going to be your turn because you've had plenty of practice solving. Now we're just applying the types of solutions. So I want you to solve this system and determine if there's one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. Please pause now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. Here's our solution. So we're going to solve this one. I'm going to use substitution because this equation is solved for y. So I'm going to take the 2x plus 1 and plug it into the second equation for y. So when I do that, I get 4x plus the 2x plus 1. So here's the 4x plus y and I've replaced y with 2x plus 1 because y is equal to 2x plus 1. So I'm going to take that away and I'm going to combine like terms first. 4x plus 2x is 6x and then add our 1 and it equals 13. To solve for x, I'm going to undo, add 1. The inverse would be to subtract 1. What I do to the left, I must do to the right side of the equation. 1 subtract 1 is 0. So I'm left with 6x, and 13 subtract 1 is 12. To solve for x, I have to undo, multiply by 6. The inverse is now to divide both sides by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1, and I'm left with x equals 12 divided by 6, which is 2. Now we know what the x value is, the x coordinate of our point of intersection. So I'm going to take 2, and I'm going to bring it up back to the first equation, y equals 2, x is 2 now, plus 1. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So my ordered pair, or point of intersection, is the ordered pair 2, 5, which means I have one solution. Your turn. I'd like you to solve this system and determine the type. Go ahead and pause, solve, and come back when you're done. Welcome back. Here's our solution. Once again, I'm going to solve by substitution. So I'm going to take y is equal to 5x minus 7. I'm going to put 5x minus 7 in for y. So when I rewrite that, I now have replaced the y. 2 times y is now our expression, 5x minus 7. Now I have to distribute this negative 2 to both terms inside the parentheses. So negative 2 times 5x is negative 10x. Negative 2 times negative 7 is positive 14. Now I need to combine like terms. 10x subtract 10x is 0. So I'm left with 14 equals 14. My variables have all been eliminated. There's no x, no y, and I have a true statement. So that means this system of equations has infinitely many solutions. Your turn. I'd like you to solve this system and determine the type of solution. Go ahead and pause, solve, and return when you're done. Welcome back. Here's our solution. So now this system is set up perfectly for elimination because our coefficients 
here of x are the same. When they have the same coefficient, they're perfectly set up for subtracting to eliminate. So I'm gonna do opposite, opposite, opposite. So I'm subtracting, subtracting, subtracting. But when you subtract a negative value, it's the same as adding the opposite. So now 8x subtract 8x is zero, 2y subtract 2y is zero, so I'm left with zero on the left, and three add five is eight. Well, we all know that zero does not equal eight, so that's no solution. So my variable terms were both eliminated when I used elimination to solve. I had a false mathematical or numerical statement, so no solution. There is no ordered pair that would be true for this. So if you graphed these, the lines would be parallel. Now there's one additional way to determine what type of solution a system has. You can compare the slopes and the y-intercepts to determine your solutions. So identify and comparing the slopes and y-intercepts to determine the number of solutions of a system of linear equations. Reminding you that when the equation or a system is written in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, the coefficient of x, m, is our slope, and whatever's being added or subtracted from that x term is our y-intercept, but only when it's written in slope-intercept form. So if it is, if our system is, and they have different slopes and different y-intercepts, then we have intersecting lines and one solution. If they have different slopes and the same y-intercept, they're still going to have intersecting lines and have one solution. So anytime we have different slopes, automatically one solution. It doesn't matter if the y-intercepts are the same or different. Different slopes mean one solution. So that tells you that when we talk about having the same slope is when we start having our special solutions. So same slope and different y-intercepts are parallel lines. So parallel lines will always have the same slope, but different y-intercepts, and they will never intersect and have no solution. Lines that have the same slope and the same y-intercept are the same line, and they have infinitely many solutions because all points are in common on both lines. So once again, different slopes, automatically one solution. Same slopes, then you have to look at their y-intercepts. If the y-intercepts are different, we have no solution because they're parallel lines. Same slope and same y-intercept is the same line and infinitely many solutions. So let's practice. I'm going to set you right up to start. It's your turn. I would like you to use the method I just showed you, identify the slopes and the y-intercepts and determine the number of solutions. Pause and solve and come back when you're done. Welcome back. Here's our solution. So the first thing I notice is the first equation is written in slope-intercept form. And that's what we're looking for. y equals mx plus b. The second one, I can see that these terms are reversed. So I can rewrite this to be in slope-intercept form because addition is commutative. So using the commutative property, I can rewrite 9 plus 2x to be 2x plus 9, because when we're adding, order doesn't matter. Now I can clearly see they're the same equation. They have the same slope and the same y-intercept, meaning we have the same slope, same y-intercept, same line, and infinitely many solutions. So you can see this now when you write them in the same form. If you go to graph it, you're graphing the same line twice and all points are in common, so infinitely many solutions. Here's another one for you. Go ahead and pause, solve, and come back when you're ready. Welcome back, here's our solution. So I can clearly see that I have two different equations here, both in slope-intercept form. So the first thing I wanna do is look at my slopes. They're different. So we know automatically when they're different, we're gonna have one solution, these ones also have different y-intercepts, but we've learned that it doesn't really matter. Say, uh, if we have different slopes, they're intersecting lines, and we have one solution. Your turn. Please pause, determine the solution, and come back. Welcome back to the solution. 
So again, we're looking at these. They are both written in slope-intercept form. We can see that they have the same slope. So now we need to look at the y-intercepts. The y-intercepts are different. So that means that they're going to have parallel lines if they were graphed, and we would have no solution. One more for you. Please pause, determine this type of solution, and come back when you're done. Welcome back, here's our solution. So once again, we're looking at slope-intercept form. I can see that my slopes are different, automatically telling me what I have, even though the y-intercepts are the same, we still have intersecting lines because the slopes are different. We will have one solution. So there you have it. That's how you determine the number of solutions to a system of linear equations. You can have one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. And you learned three different ways to determine that by graphing, solving algebraically, or considering the system in slope-intercept form. So I thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you have a great day and come back soon.